let me show you how to do the initial setup on Poco F7. So once you turn on your phone, what you're going to do is, of course, press on this arrow in order to proceed. First, we need to choose our language. So, of course, we're going to choose English United States. And then let's go next. Over here, we need to choose our region. If it's your if your region is immediately selected, then of course you can proceed. If not, you can switch to anything else. So let's say we're going to choose United States over here and proceed. After that, we need to press next over here. Scroll down on this text and select that you have read and agreed to the user agreement and privacy policy and proceed by pressing next. If you have two SIM cards inserted into the phone, then we need to set up the preferences for mobile data. So we can select it over here for calls as well and for messaging. After that, if you want to, you can set up this phone using your old device. So here you can proceed by choosing what is your previous device, or you can just press skip if you want to perform a clean setup. And this is what I'm going to do. In my case, I have two SIM cards, so we can once again manage what is used for calls and what is used for mobile data. I'm just going to press proceed and press next. Then we have the Wi-Fi network. So we can connect to our Wi-Fi if possible, of course. And if not, then you can just press skip. If you connect it to Wi-Fi, press next. Next, we can sign in into our Google account. So you can provide your email or phone number. You can also create a new account in case you need that. Or you can skip this process by pressing skip over here. If you decided to sign in, you need to agree to Google Terms of Service in order to proceed. Then you have the option to copy apps and data from your Google account. So if you have a backup, you can proceed by pressing next in order to choose the backup, or you can just press don't copy in order to proceed. Now over here, we have the option that allows us to set up the screen lock. So you can choose your, uh, well, even biometrics as well. So you can set them up over here if you want to, or of course you can skip that and set up the password and biometrics later on in the settings. We also have Google services such as the location. We can disable scanning over here as it is not necessary to have it enabled all the time. And then we have usage and diagnostic data. We can agree to that if you want to and proceed by pressing next. Then we have Google backup. This is of course, if you sign into Google, so you can decide if you want to backup any of these files or information, or you can just press don't backup in order to not create any backup. Now we have the option that allows us to choose the default browser and search engine. So we can proceed by pressing next. And over here we have different browsers that we can choose. And um, if you don't know which one to choose, most likely you want to choose Google Chrome. I think this is the most um, universal one. It does uh, work just fine. And then of course choose set as default. Then we have the search engine. And here again, if you don't know which one to choose, most likely you want to choose Google and then press set as default. And that's almost it. Uh, you can just press leave and get reminded in order to go through additional options where you can, for example, choose if you want to use buttons or gesture for navigation. However, I'm going to press continue in order to show you what you can find if you proceed. So over here we have quick share, which uh, we can enable that we want, we want, we want to agree to it if you want to use it pretty much. So we can press I agree over here. Then we have Google Gemini, uh, which is the digital assistant by Google. So we can press continue over here. And then we have the voice command, Hey Google. So this allows you to say, Hey Google out loud in order to activate the Gemini. If you want to use it, then of course you can press turn on. Otherwise press no thanks on the left side. Here we can set up our payment info by using Google Pay so that you can use NFC later on, but you can also set it up later as well. So I'm just going to skip that. And then we have anything else. So in this case, there is nothing much uh, left that I want to do. Of course, if you want to do any of these things, then you can tap them in order to customize it or do something with it. In my case, I'm just going to press no thanks. And after that, I believe we should be able to proceed to next stuff. All right. So then we have basic settings. Once again, we have location. We have automatic system updates, well, which I'm going to actually keep on. We also have personalized ads, which we can, of course, disable. We have user experience program and so on and so forth. So you can go through this list in order to decide what you want to use. Of course, once again, later in the settings, you can re-enable or just disable these options if needed. Then we have parental controls. If you want to set up parental controls on this phone, then of course you can turn them on and follow the instructions. 
In my case, this font is for me, so I don't have to do that. Next, we can choose the font. I'm going to stick with the default one. Let's proceed. Then we have the option to use the app drawer or just stick with the home screen. And that's all. I'm going to actually use the app drawer. And we have the navigation mode. So here we can either choose gestures or buttons. In case needed, you can also learn gestures over here. So in my case, I prefer buttons and I'm going to select them and press next. And now we need to wait a couple of seconds to let the phone set up the system. And once the setup is completed, we can just press continue in order to proceed to the home screen. And that's pretty much it. Now we can start using your phone. I can customize it as you wish. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe.